Hello there. On this video I will be finding not much, but there is a few decent finds to show you from other people. I was lucky enough to be invited down on a dig in Shropshire by a lad called Rich, channel name Rich Biss. I'm sure you'll know him. If not, please subscribe and please subscribe to all the other folks who are in this particular video as well. There was a really good bunch of people there. Unfortunately, my camera was playing up. I didn't get much footage of the other people or myself doing any talky bits, which some of you might be pleased about. So there's not much talking in this video. But I did manage to get some of the finds recorded. There wasn't a vast amount of stuff came up, but there was a few reasonable finds. Unfortunately, I couldn't do the two days, the Saturday and Sunday. I could only manage the Saturday. So I took the Saturday off and made the 500 mile round trip to Rich's place to meet all these other great guys from YouTube. Did I find much? Uh, no. Out of all the people who were there, I probably found the least. I found one coin in lovely condition, which I gave away to Danny, who I believe left it in the hotel before he left. But would I do it again? Absolutely. It was a great day and the finds were really the least of my concern. It was just great to meet all those very nice people. And I would do it again tomorrow, if I could. Now with my camera playing up, I haven't got pictures or videos of everybody that was there. But I do have a picture courtesy of Ashanaya, who was also one of the detectorists who was there. So if I can, I'll try and put the names of everybody on that picture and have it at the end. Now there was a couple of high profile UK detectorists that couldn't be there who were invited and that was Dave from Relicant in Scotland. Unfortunately he couldn't make it so maybe he's the next one. And Jed Peace Havens, uh, an awesome guy and um, funny with it as well. <laughs> he couldn't make it either. I think he had problems with his communications or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but it would be good if we could do it all again to get those two guys on the hunt because they're nice folks as well. If I can, I would like to arrange a similar dig next year and get everybody up to my place because I've got a few permissions that are just rolling hills and I haven't got a cat in hell's chance of even scratching the surface. So if I can, I would like to have a word with a farmer and if he's agreeable to it, Maybe so we could do it at my place next year. Anyway, on with the video. For the first four to four and a half hours, I was out with the E-Track, and this is how I got on. Now there's some coke. It didn't read that. What it did read is that, which looks like it's from part of a buckle. Yep, looks like a snapped part of a big old buckle. And at one time, that would have been a beautiful design. No. That's a cracking start. I tell you, all oh, you and tape. Always me. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Now this gave a signal of 12.14. I was hoping it would be a little hammered coin, but unfortunately it's not. What it is, is a little musket ball. Tiny one. Must be out of a pistol. That's a cracking little button, like. Good, aren't it? Ah, it's, yeah. it's got a hell of a lot of the, the gilt left on it. I wiped it and I thought, oh no. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful design as well. Yeah. Here's an unusual find. I just found this line on the top. And at first I thought it was like a child's bouncy ball. But it appears to be made of stone. And it's not perfectly round, so it looks like it's been carved. Uh, so that's an interesting one. I'll be interested to see what the folks say at dinner time when I get back. After dinner, or after lunch, as you posh southerners call it, I switched to the Deus, and this is how I got on with the Deus. Well, I don't believe it. I think this may actually be my first coin here. <laughs> it's getting towards the end of the day for me now, because I've got a 250 mile drive home, but um, I think I may have found a coin at last. 
please don't let it be a button. Well, there's Britannia on the back, and on the port rate side we've got George II, and that's actually in pretty good condition. Uh, <laughs> I just can't believe it's my first coin of the day. <laughs> and I think the date on that's actually just about readable. I think it's 1739. First coin of the day, can't be bad. Hopefully there'll be more to come, but um, I'm not holding out much hope because it's taken me probably about five or six hours to find this first one. This one was reading mid 60s and it looks like something pretty old. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. I thought it was maybe the back of a spur, but it, I don't think it is. Yeah, that looks way too narrow to go around the back of a boot, even by the time it's come out here. So I'm not sure what that is. It's got a bit of weight to it, but it isn't lead. More like copper or bronze. Yep, don't know, but it does look very old. Time's running out, but I've already seen a few hammered coins found, and everybody I've met have been lovely people. Thank you very much, Rich. I haven't found much, but I've really enjoyed my day so far. I've probably got about another two hours left, but I'm pretty sure the other fellas and ladies will hunt well on into darkness, more than likely. <laughs> Rich has just found a nice cartwheel penny, 1797, from George III. It's port rate side. George is looking to the right. There's some detail on it. Pretty decent, really. That it one. is, I. I think it's good. And there's Britannia sitting down with the trident in 1797 along the bottom. That was reading 95 to 96 on the deals. So that's your lot. As far as the finds go for the Saturday and the Sunday, I wasn't there on the Sunday, but from what I gather, the finds weren't throwing themselves out of the ground into our finds pouches. But that didn't matter. It was just a real pleasure and also a privilege to meet everybody that was there and engage them personally as opposed to through a keyboard. Um, uh, although I do reply to about 2,000 comments every month, I would trade all of that to meet 10 people face to face because it's so much more personal. It's, it's really good to be out with people of that sort of detecting caliber who have a real passion for the hobby. Hopefully I'll get a little bit of time over the next few weeks for my own hunts and they should be coming up. There's also going to be a few aquatic videos if I can and if the weather stays good and if I get time I'm going to do a few more survival and bushcraft videos. I might delve into making shelters or possibly making traps in those so watch out for them. Right, ready. Nope. Hello there, on this hunt I am in Staffordshire, I think. Either Shropshire or Staffordshire in the UK. Please don't let it be a button. For the first four, four and a half hours I was out with the E-Track. No I wasn't. Yes I was. Actually can I just record that? <laughs> I forgot to record yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> 
I thought it was a tomato or some sort of, maybe it's even a bouncy ball. 